Now today we're going to continue our talk about trig ratios. Remember that's the ratio between two sides of a right triangle. So um, let's draw a triangle real quick. And we'll go ahead and call this triangle ABC. Now for this we're going to go ahead and give this um, some lengths or some distances. So we'll call this, we'll say that it has a length of X. This has some length Y. And this has some length Z. Okay. Now, um, the one that we've talked about before was the tangent ratio. Um, we're going to also introduce now what's called the sine ratio and the cosine ratio. Okay. Those are the three one, the three that we're going to talk about. Um, so let's go with the first one. The first one is the sine ratio. Okay. Now the abbreviation leaves off the E, so it's just SIN, and then we'll um, just use this angle A as our first angle. Now the sine function is the opposite, or the sine ratio is the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. Okay? Which in this case, A, uh, or across from A, the opposite leg, the opposite side is X. Right? And then the hypotenuse is going to be across the right angle, which is the Z. Okay? Now for um, the next function, the cosine, That's just abbreviated COS. The cosine font ratio is the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse, which in this drawing, adjacent leg is going to be the Y, and the hypotenuse would be Z. Okay. Now, the one that we've talked about before was the tangent ratio. Okay, now that was TAN, and the tangent of A was the opposite leg over the adjacent leg, okay, which in this case, opposite is x, and the adjacent is the y. Right, now, a way to remember these trig functions is it's similar to uh, what you guys learned as far as when you called this a PEMDAS. You remember PEMDAS is parentheses, exponents, multiplied by, and subtract. Um, the mnemonic device that we use for uh, trig ratios is called SOPITOA. Right, and then so it would be the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And the tangent is opposite over adjacent. Um, another way that I remembered um, was taught how to do this was um, the saying that went, some old hippie caught another hippie tripping on acid. Okay, so this is just different ways to help you remember the differences between sine, cosine, and tangent functions. All right, so now we're going to look at an, an actual example. So I put some numbers here, 5, 12, and 13. And we want to look at the sine of A, cosine of A, tangent of A, and then the sine of B, cosine B, and tangent B. All right, so um, from A... This is going to be my opposite, this would be adjacent, and this would be my hypotenuse. All right, so the sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's going to be 5 over 13. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be 12 over 13. And then the tangent of A would be opposite over adjacent, so that would be 5 over 12. Okay. Now, if I look at angle B, from angle B going this way, that across from or opposite of B would be the 12, adjacent would be the 5, and the hypotenuse would be 13. All right, so for the sine of B, that's opposite over the hypotenuse. Okay, now for the cosine, that's adjacent over the hypotenuse. And then the tangent would be opposite, which is 12, over 5. All right, now we're going to look at another example, same thing, uh, same idea. We want to find this time the sine of S, cosine of S, and tangent of angle S. Then we want to find the sine, cosine, and tangent of angle E. Okay, so from S, we want to go ahead and always kind of define, look at, and see which ones are opposite. Which one is our hypotenuse, and then which one will be adjacent? 
right, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's going to be 3 over 5. Cosine is adjacent over the hypotenuse. Tangent would be opposite over the adjacent. Okay, now for the E, when I get to E, that's going to move things around. It's going to switch the opposite and adjacent. Because now from E going this way, this becomes the opposite. The 3 becomes the adjacent. Okay, so that means for the sine of E, we're looking at opposite over hypotenuse, which is going to be 4 over 5. Now the cosine of E is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be 3 over 5. The tangent of E is opposite over adjacent, which would be 4 over 3. All right, so on this example, we want to write the cosine of 30 degrees. So we're going to have to use our special right triangles. So let me draw one out real quick. Okay, so here's my right angle. Let this side be 30. This side be 60. Now, um, like we did before, the, the, we let the smallest side be x, the across the 60 is x squared root of 3, and across the right angle is our 2x. Now to make this easy, since we're talking about ratios, um, I'm going to go ahead and let x be 1. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this as 1. 1 times the square root of 3 is just the square root of 3. 2 times 1 would just be 2. Okay, So cosine of 30 degrees is the adjacent leg, which is the square root of 3, over the hypotenuse, which is 2. Okay. So this would be my answer, square root of 3 over 2. Okay, on this one we want to find the sine of 45 degrees. So on this triangle, right triangle, if this is the right angle and this side, this angle is 45 degrees, and that means this angle has to be 45 degrees. And then we'll, the pattern of the formula we use was x, x, x square root of 2. So like 30, 60, 90, since again we're dealing with ratios, I'm going to let x be 1 because that's going to simplify what we're doing here. So then this becomes 1, 1, 1 square root of 2 or just square root of 2. Now the sine ratio is the opposite over the hypotenuse, so that's going to be, for our 45, it's going to be 1, is our opposite leg. The hypotenuse is going to be square root of 2. Okay, so this would just be 1 over the square root of 2. Now remember, if you need to rationalize the denominator, we multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 2. So simplifying this, it comes out to be square root of 2 over 2. Uh, for this next section, um, you're going to use your calculator, so uh, the only thing that you need to remember about this is to change your settings to degrees. Other than that, it's just simply typing this in. You hit the sine function, then you type in 52, and that to the nearest hundredth would come out to be um, 0 0.79, the cosine of 19 is going to be 0 0.95 and then for the tangent of 65 that's going to come out to be 2.14 all right now we need to find some missing side lengths now um, with this triangle they gave me both angles so I can use either one um, I'm going to use the 21. Now again, from the, since I'm using this 21, okay, the x is going to be my opposite leg, the 9 is my hypotenuse. So the sine of 21 is going to equal x over 9. Okay? And to solve for x, what we want to do is we want to multiply both sides by 9. Okay, so we can cancel out the denominator. And then so x is equal to 9 times the sine of 21 degrees. Okay, so putting this in the calculator, x is going to be about 3.23. All right, now on this problem, um, on my angles here, all right, 
So from this angle, this is Y is going to be my opposite that's across from it. My hypotenuse is X. My adjacent would be 8. All right, so let's solve for X first. Um, so that's going to be hypotenuse and my adjacent. That's going to tell me that I need to use cosine of 54 degrees is going to be my adjacent over my hypotenuse. Okay, so I need to multiply by the denominator so I can get rid of my fraction. Okay, so let's factor out. So x times the cosine of 54 is equal to 8. I need to solve for x, so that needs, means I need to divide both sides by the cosine of 54. Okay, so that factors, and x is equal to 8 over the cosine of 54 degrees, which is going to be about 13.61. Now, for the y value, I'm still using my angle, my 54 degrees angle, so this is the opposite and my adjacent. So opposite and adjacent would mean that I need to use my tangent function. Okay. So opposite would be y, adjacent would be 8. So in this case, I'm going to multiply both sides by 8, so that I can factor that away. And then so y is equal to 8 times the tangent of 54. And so y is about 11.01.